as the honourable member for Gippsland. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I rise to speak in support of the motion and commend the member for Parks for raising this issue, this issue and, I, and also thank other members for their thoughtful, thoughtful contributions to the debate. And as we've already heard, there are many education challenges which are unique to children and their parents living in the more isolated parts of our nation. The Gippsland region is probably typical of many other country electorates. We have some larger towns which offer a more diverse range of education opportunities, but there are also many rural and isolated areas where the services are more difficult to provide and also more difficult for families to access. And in moving this motion, the member for Parks has sought to highlight the need for additional government support and assistance to help children access a full range of educational services from early childhood right through to tertiary studies. And I, think I congratulate the member for Parks putting forward some practical and common sense solutions such as the mobile preschool services in his electorate. And education, Deputy Speaker, is an issue that's dear not only to my heart but to all other parents that I speak to in, in regional areas. And we simply want to make sure that our children have access to the services that sometimes I fear metropolitan families may take for granted. From a social justice perspective, it's a question of equity. And for the hard-nosed economists of the world, it's a question also of productivity. Helping children from rural and regional areas to achieve their full potential will help to improve the skill base of country areas and reduce the skill shortages we are constantly faced with across a range of industries. In a broader sense, an issue of major concern to many regional areas, and I include Gippsland in this, is the comparatively poor retention rates and participation in higher education. The Gippsland region has one of the worst retention rates in, in Victoria compared to the state, a metropolitan rate of about 80 per cent. In 2006, there were just 65 per cent of Gippsland students finished year 12. Now, I take up the contribution of the member for Braddon and the member for Barker and their thoughtful comments in relation to the barriers, the geographical barriers that we are placing in front of these students. There are many barriers to accessing higher education, including the lack of access actually in our electorates, but also I believe the biggest factor is undoubtedly the cost. Uh, when you have to move hundreds of kilometres to study, uh, set up home, get a part-time job and then excel in your studies, it's an enormous burden for students from regional areas, and I fear that we're actually setting them up to fail. We need to be doing more to help rural and regional students and their families overcome these cost barriers. I support greater use of cadetships and bonded scholarships or studentships to pay students an allowance while at university and then guarantee them a job after a fixed period if they return to serve in a regional area. It's an approach that has been used at various times. I think it's worthy of further investment. I think we also need to be innovative in regards to the extra costs borne by country families when sending, their, when sending students away from home for further study. We need to explore all the options to overcome these accommodation and cost of living pressures, uh, which place, I believe, a disproportionate burden on rural and regional families. The member for Braddon touched on, and I would like to expand a little bit further on the opportunities to provide a level of tax deductibility for accommodation costs for the parents who are supporting students while they're living away from home. Making these accommodation costs tax deductible for supporting parents would have the extra benefit of increasing the expendable income for the families back in those regional areas where the low socioeconomic factors and the household disposable income is somewhat lower, somewhat lower than in metropolitan areas. And such initiatives to reduce the cost barrier will help to open the door to further studies for regional Australians. And I take up also the previous members' comments in relation to the, uh, the disadvantage being felt. A lot of the students that we're dealing with here in these isolated areas are Indigenous students, and it's the same in, in Gippsland. Uh, the level of disadvantage within our Indigenous community in terms of the, the health outcomes and unemployment and the incidence of violence in the homes is directly related, I believe, to their participation or lack of participation in the education system at an early age. And to give these young people the best possible chance, the best possible start in life, we must support them through those early stages of education. Uh, it's not just an issue of the more remote parts of Northern Territory. In, in our rural and regional communities in Victoria, we have issues where our Indigenous students not participating in the formal education system. We must take up the challenge to get them to school and get them learning the skills they're going to need to succeed in our community in the future. I believe it's going to require innovative local solutions, which recognise these individual circumstances in different communities, rather than a one-size-fits-all approach to policy making. In my electorate, there has been some excellent work done by people such as Doug Vickers, the principal of Bensdale West Primary School, to encourage greater participation by Indigenous and disadvantaged children. And sometimes, Deputy Speaker, it may be as simple as providing resources to go to the homes of these children and actually bring them to school and provide them with a decent breakfast, getting them engaged in the lifelong education experience, even if their parents are perhaps not as committed to the cause. Deputy Speaker, I, I, I congratulate all members for their contribution to this debate, and I believe that a, a genuine education revolution, if that's what we're actually aspiring to achieve, a genuine education revolution must meet the needs of families in rural, regional and isolated areas. 